Hello there everyone, welcome back to TNO The Lost Days of Europe, in which I'm your host, Tamoka Lovo, and right now, we are currently reviewing the fleet for our navy. Once upon a time, before a certain Mr. Adolf had even joined the National Daddyist Movement, the Kaiserliche Marie was the pride of Germany, and the envy of the world indeed. It was so powerful that the weak, pitiful West forced us to dismantle it after the shame of the Great War, for fear of us returning to greatness, of course. This did not uh, stop us from rebuilding our fleet in the glory days of the Reich, restoring the Kriegsmarine to heights unseen by even the Empire. By the end of the Second World War, of course, the German fleet was among the strongest on Earth, with the masses of U-boat wolf packs becoming the bane of our enemies and the surface fleet, backed by the power of our battleships, spreading fear across those who opposed us for a time, though, it seemed. The old imperial dream of having naval dominance could be achieved. However, as of late, the Greeks Marine has been, if not trading light water, sliding backwards in its ability. The ships and subs rust in the harbors, underfunded and undercrewed. The Greeks Marine, in general, has become the black sheep of the hair. Constantly overlooked in favor of the Luftwaffe and the Wehrmacht's knees nowadays, the Kriegsmarine is in a state of disrepair, slowly decaying. This cannot stand, especially with some of the Führer's more grandiose plans requiring a strong navy to succeed. Two schools of thought have emerged in the Admiralty, each butting against each other in a constant battle. The first school emphasizes the need for battleships in the modern age, arguing that with simple renovations and fixes, the sheer power of a battleship brings would dominate both the American and Japanese fleets. The second school pushes heavily to scrap all battleships, instead pivoting into the new world of carrier-based doctrine. The decision falls the big papa daddy now, uh, who must now decide, sh shall the old tried and tested battleship prevail, or will it fall to the modern competition of the aircraft carrier? Unfortunately, we lose political power, but whatever. And we're going to go ahead and do the New Age of Science. I think I've read this one before, uh, but I'll read it again because we can. Even in the year before the Civil War, the German nation was the most advanced repository of modern science and technology in human history. It had conquered the stars and put a man on the moon before that. It had conquered the atom, and unleashed its fury on the Americans to end the Second World War. The two great leaps in human knowledge in the last century have come at the hands of the German people, and the whole world knows it, and yet, despite it all, the lesser races continue to vie for the crown, and the unfortunate truth is, they've begun to get far too close for comfort. That ends now. Big Daddy Papa Goring will not allow the Reich to ever be surpassed in any way, and to this end he has prepared a campaign on intellectual revitalization on all fronts, from agriculture to armored weapons, followed up with, uh, ooh, ooh, yes, yes, the G-D-R-W-I. Ooh, academic base gets worse. Ooh, I don't like that. But, oh well. The concept of a unified body of scientific innovation and research has long been sought by the Reich's as technocrats. Finally, however, it seems that the Big Daddy Goring has heeded their words. The uh, GGRCI, the Gross Germanisches Reich Council on Scientific Innovation, serves as preface. Through its establishment, we shall successfully centralize all of Germany's most talented minds so that they may work on the project in the Goring, and therefore the Reich desires and requires the most. And we have quite a few comments to go through, but, and we're also working on some of our intelligence agencies at Abwehr, just because. Well, we're going to need it for the future. Let's be real. We're going to need it for the future. But happy 1966, everyone. Let's get a little bit more of that going. And right here, we're looking pretty good. And radar would be pretty nice. Ooh, level 4. That'd be nice for naval-based stuff, but or land-based stuff. I really want us to focus a little bit more on our naval-based stuff, just because that'd be good. But we do need to do our land auction as well. So land auction first, and the next thing we'll do is more ship stuff. And we're doing overwhelming support, just because I want to make sure our navy is good. So right now, we've got a lot of comments, such as... I asked you guys yesterday whether we should wait and build ourselves up or just go straight to war with everyone as fast as possible. And the overwhelming answer was that we should just take our time. Even if we complete this on the last day, we still complete it successfully. So we're going to take our time, build ourselves up, maybe build a few new guns, figure out which way we want to go, build up our navy, our army, and really our divisions. Because I got something, I would say special, but uh, interesting for us to peruse. But let's go and do the GWRI. Followed up with <clears throat> Purge Academia. German academia's support for and relationship with Führer Goring has been uh, contentious to say the least. The eggheads were the first to turn their heads in disdain from our struggle in the Burger Creek, and some retain this hatred even as they walk back into our offices instead. By allowing, uh, indeed, by allowing certain individuals to remain a part of the GGRCI, we may unintentionally stifle scientific development in the Reich as the first intellectual seek to slow progress. To prevent this, we shall get rid of the more troublesome elements of the scientific academia and those who are not in cording with or in accord with Goring's vision. There are some among us who believe that our future projects are folly, that they need that they will lead to disaster and ultimately ruin. To say them to say them, I say. Did you ever hear my see my Volta PPK? Academic base gets slowly worse, we get more political power, but we lose some research speed for about half a year. But Fear Goring announced a sweeping new RD program. And if I already speak today at the Heidelberg University, the Fear announced a new approach towards the Reich's fashionalistic 
up research and development programs. We've already proven the justness and the certainty of a cause. No, none will ever again think of moving against the right for fear, Goring declared. We have rooted out the traitors wherever they may, may have hid. And now all we have to concern us is the mongrel states of America and the Japanese. But we lack the tools and the weapons to oppose them, and we have allowed ourselves to fall behind in the technological arms race. We became complacent and decadent. We were the first to the bomb and first to the moon, and now we have squandered that advantage. We will resume our rifle place as the masters of all technology, just not just in Europe, but the entire world. Never again will Germany lag behind the rest of the world. And what is this? The Ghost Deutsche Reichsrat for Wissenschaftliche Innovation. The future of science in the Reich for some time, but the fear of the Führer is simply another useless organization set up with the end goal of destroying military's power and influence. Because of the sinister end goal, we will have to spend a sum every month equal to our corruption percentage times the yearly budget of the GRWI. But, but the group does not work in a vacuum, and should either the concern of the military or the civilian population reach 100% because of the, uh, several failed projects, we should be forced to shut down the whole operation. All oh, crap, decrease this corruption. Decrease military concern. Public concern will drop. Decrease public concern. Oh, get more corruption. Oh, God. Decrease overall concern. Discontinue the la leaguer. Ooh. And we got so much on Bratislava, so we're going to wait for that. And I want to do this part soon, but I don't know. It's better to... If we do it now, we get their factories and stuff. I mean, that seems like it's probably better to do it now so we can actually get them. But if we have to pacify them, that's not good. Resist this occupation. And General Bezek Letlin. Um, it's slowly going up. Look at all that stuff. I guess we can't release them as vassals or anything. Staving off the inevitable, of course. Um, so, yeah, we got some time. We got some time. And. Pragmatist Unified Kazakhstan, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. With the task of all formal administrative tasks required to establish your GGRCI, uh, the Gross German Shows Right Council on Scientific Innovation, it's time we, as the saying goes, get down to business. Thus, with the support of Fyodor Goring himself, let the process of research and development commence as their funding and top quality manpower shall produce the finest military science that the history has ever seen. German science, as they say, is the best in the world, and we shall lead it to glory. Absolutely. Cool. Um, if this isn't do anything bad here, we'll be kind of okay. So we got a lot of time in founding of the GDRWI. The banquet hall was packed with the dignitaries from all over the Reich, scientists from Frankfurt, engineers from Danzig, physicists from Germania, and many others. The food was good and the conversations riveting, but all eyes were focused on the stage and the podium that stood upon it. After all, the man speaking tonight, the Führer himself, was the main attraction. So the Führer, clad in his finest uniform, stepped up to the podium. He did so to thunderous applause, my fellow Germans. It's an honor and a pleasure to see so many of you here today, he began. I look around this room and I see the best and brightest of Germany, those who both advance our Reich's technology, both military and civilian, while staying true to our ideals. However, for years, our progress on the scientific front has slowed. The Reichsvorschungsrat, which I know you all love, a ripple of laughter rolls through the audience, has been bogged down for years under the endless weight of political obstructionism, corruption, and the sweeping tide of unchecked Judeo Bolshevik influence no more. The age of progress has returned to German science. With this new centralized ministry that we have begun or we have created to replace the bloated corpse of the Reichsforschungsrat, led by the watchful gaze of my esteemed colleague and good friend, Werner Ossenberg. He walked onto the stage, to a loud applause. He waved to the crowd as he took his spot next to the Führer, whose smile spread across his face. Germany shall once again be at the forefront of technology. Drink well tonight, friends, for today we celebrate the founding of the GDRWI. The room shook with the cheers and applause as Ossenberg and Goring shook hands, making sure to smile for the cameras. A brilliant step forward. Political power? Ooh. Civil centralized civilian research. Once we start this focus, we have a limited opportunity to get the military and Kriegsmarine involved in the project. This opportunity goes away once the focus ends. Ooh, I might want to wait for that one. Ooh. Greater evaluation. Update the equipment granted to infantry. Ooh. I kind of want to do this off. The power of the atom sounds like a lot of fun. Um, investments in the field of electrical infrastructure will allow us to construct greater, more ambitious electrical plants to channel the power of the atom. Atomic planning. I like that a lot. Uh, make them grow like mushrooms. Public concern will rise. Biology and application. Ooh. Look at that. So we get slightly more recruitable population. We get better consumer goods. Agriculture goes up. We get more civilian factories. I need to do this one then. Uh, Volkswissenschaft. Everyone will always always likes to think about the military applications of technology, but far too few, including the fear, it seems, often consider the civilian benefits of new knowledge. Chemicals are gr great at causing chaos and death amongst enemies, but can they not also improve our crops? The atom can be split to destroy entire cities, but can they not also power them? Herr Ausenberg is a smart enough man to realize that putting all of his technological eggs in one basket is a foolish idea. At the same time, though, he realizes that given the martial bent of the current regime, he will have to carefully tailor the applications of his ideas so that they might also serve more military-minded purposes, if only to get the projects approved. And biology in application. Ah, this is a great description. Je go biology in application desk. I love it. Look at that population. Oh, not enough men. I, we love men here. 
Oh my goodness, we need more men. And we're still mobilizing. Yes. Ah, oh, good, good, good. And actually, we will become a spy master. We need to have a little more upgrades. That's totally fine. Right now, we're building up a dock. One thing of dockyards. Three things of military factories. Two more cities. And another one po point-ish. So, more military these guys right now. Okay, so I've been kind of experimenting things with off-screen. We're getting some attack helicopters because I sort of knew that these existed, but I didn't realize that we could throw them onto our divisions. So, if we come over here... Did you know attack helicopters give you, if you put them as a support company, give you 126 breakthrough and give you 54 more soft attack? Now, it requires quite a bit of them. 24 of them and 24 support equipment, but that's like nothing. They give you 35 more ground attack, well, I guess more air defense and capacity and stuff like that, but 55-ish more soft attack and a ton of breakthrough and a little more defense and set almost 70, almost 80 hard attack? I think I'm going to try to use those guys. I think it'd be worth it. Obviously, we don't have enough attack helicopters now. Eventually, we will. I really like using them, and for now, I think I want to use logistic companies just because we have the equipment for it. And supply will go quite a bit down. So I think that'll actually be really good to use for us. So. And then, we could get some recon. Yeah, but still. But still. Um, actually, you. Uh, Vogue's Vincent Shops. Very good. Biology and application. Followed up with what? For the plants. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. More multi-population, even more recruitable population, and less consumer goods factories. All for the industry, for the people, for the plants. Out with conservation, in with innovation. It's nothing but scientific progress for the GGR. So why should the Reich's produce and plants be exempt from progress? To truly allow the Aryan race to triumph over our inferior contemporaries, we must ensure that every plant on the Reich is stamped with a swastika. Thus, as mentioned, it is best we put genetically modified organisms, GMOs, in all the Reich's plants. We shall eat and fight for the future. This report was not sponsored by the agriculture concerns in any way. Allegations of corruption is Corruption, mismanagement, <clears throat> or funds, or bribery constitutes slander and will be investigated accordingly. Very good. Centralized civilian research. The field of civilian research isn't as interesting while supported as the various military branches of the GGR uh, Council on Scientific Innovation, but the General Secretary is treating as they would a real problem. Some of the civilian research divisions are still holding out, though, refusing to share the design work of the rest of the GGRSEI. The General Secretary wishes the situation to be resolved, but involving the Big Daddy would result in a maximum force solution, and someone would likely be arrested, or, or probably shot. So, let's try to avoid that for now, as we're still trying to build up some more ships here, too. Uh, death of uh, uh, that dude. We've got plenty of tanks for now. We need more army XP, which sucks, but whatever. Um, what are we, are we building? Yes, we're building. All we need is a little bit more rubber. I would like to become a little bit more rubberly independent, but we have Central Africa, so what do you expect? Thank you. And that's fine. Oh, Marines? Yes, we would like to use some Marines. Um, planes. I mean, honestly, it's 66, so we're doing pretty darn well here. Uh, let's see. Heavy aircraft. We have spy planes that I never use. Tactical bombers, strategic bombers, stuff like that. But we also have helicopters, and I do want to make sure that our attack helicopters are quite good, but we already have these guys. It's looking great. I'm not going to lie, it's looking pretty darn great. Over here, it's 1960, so we have stuff going on. Let's get extreme environment training. No, you know what? No, let's wait. I want to make sure we get our naval stuff done. So, we got subs. I do want to use better battleships. So, let's go with those guys, because we're going to need some big old thick navy boys. Destroyers, cruisers. I personally like cruisers, so we're going to go with two of them, too. Maybe I should have started researching them earlier. It is what it is. Get going on the phone. He'll, he will break them. Oh, yeah. In there. Cool. Castle defense. Good. And hey, more divisions. Nice. Nice. Ah, yes. Good. Speed, 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 my boys. And we still have how long? We got 200 days, so we're looking really good. Spending is 100. Corruption is 0.1. That's not too bad. Biology and application. Cool, some comments. Um, like I said earlier, take some time to build up before going back to war and do more focuses. So we're trying that right now. And honestly, when we go to Warsawaki, it'll take less than a day. And look at them. Compared to everything we have on the field, they're, they're literally just going to die to us. So, uh, someone also says, click on Uganda. <sighs> Why did Uganda break free? Why? Mutesa the second, and uh, no focus tree there, and yeah, they exist. And if you want to see the culture of the group, it is Baganda. And this one is La Longo Akoli, which I'm sure I'm saying these all wrong, so it is what it is. Cool. Now the comment is, someone says our flag is pretty poggers. I would agree, quite, quite poggers. And then, can we go to war with everyone, someone asks. Technically, I think yes. I think we can. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure we can, so. And hopefully we can. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time down here. Just because it seems like this is really good. Military's power will decrease based upon corruption and the amount of uh, pipes built. Um, I want to wait to do this one. 
Um, I did say which way we will go. Also, I do want to let you know that I didn't realize that we couldn't take this one when we were to Grenadiers, which this one's focused on more like the more manpower aspect, like getting more conscription factor will go up. Um, we can't do shock and awe, of course. We can't do a gun uh, for every meter, nor the quality of quantity, which actually would have hurt our ability to wage war a little bit more. We'll get more population. A gun in every hand, uh, Panzer Grenadier operations, or citizenship through service. I, my apologies. I really do apologize. But... Whether we do mobile support versus legacy of the Ghost Division, there was overall more support for legacy of the Ghost Division, which we will do, as well as between Gut the Hulks versus Modernize the Fleet. There's also more support for Modernize the Fleet. So we're going to modernize them and get more battleship technology, research speed, and stuff like that. So it is what it is. Cool. For the plants. Uh, I think we'll just go ahead and do that one because I do want to get these extra things. Naval experience requires all the following. So one, one, one. Uh, mass conversion. Uh, no such thing as obsolete. One of the following. Mass conversion to aircraft carriers. No such thing as obsolete. Okay. Yeah. So we gotta do boom, 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 boom. That's gonna take a while to do. Actually, that's not too bad. Just because I want to get those extra five dockyards so we can build, 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 build. Because the American Navy is not going to be easy to beat. So modern has a fleet. Well, the prospect of brand new German carriers is tempting enough. The fact remains that the Kriegsmarine, indeed, Germany as a whole, is woefully under-experienced with the tactics and strategy needed to use an aircraft carrier. If we try to switch to a new Navy based around aircraft carriers, we will needlessly be outclassed by both the America and Japan, who are both a head start in carriers and experience. My apologies for doing this. I want to make sure time goes on as we do that, too. Cool. And... My apologies. Instead, the Führer has taken the sensible option. The Kriegsmarine, instead of throwing money into the pit of a full fleet retrofit, shall stay the course of the fleet in being. Instead, our fleet shall renovate our battleships into the modern age, adding the improvements of uh, uh, of the modern age to our behemoths. If the Americans and Japanese think that their age of battleship has passed, then they're in for a real surprise. We shall make our battleships into the envy of the world, as they once were. Once again, the battleships shall rule the seas, and those weaker than us will tremble in despair as the pitiful collections of cruisers and carriers shall shatter under the might of our cannons. So, we get the naval XP, we get some more experience gain, and honestly, it just... Refitting is not really worth it. It's really not. So, uh, you get a lot more research speed for carriers, but... Uh, it's okay. Uh, yeah, let's keep going that way for now. Mm, yes. And you are going to just put down a lot of resistance here, so... Yeah, uh, that one's a little higher. Go up to there. There you go. That's what we want to see. There you go. Cool. Help put down a lot of resistance. A lot, a lot of resistance there. For the plants, and then modernize the fleet. And I rush that once to revive Plan Z. Plan Z is plan spoken about in equal parts of reverence and disgust within the Kriegsmarine to its supporters. Plan Z was well intended, if poorly timed, to attempt to create a true surface fleet for Germany that would have obliterated the British if given the time and chance to its detractors. Plan Z sucked away resources from the U-Boat program, forcing Dunnitz and its crews to work with less than what they should have and extending the war pointlessly. Whatever one's opinion is on the plan in the Kriegsmarine, the only important thing or opinion on the matter is the Führer's, and he is firmly in favor. As Goring bluntly bluntly states, the only way to defeat such superpowers as Japan and America is to defeat their navies on the open seas, and a modern Plan Z would give the Kriegsmarine the ability to do just that. As Hitler worked so tirelessly to defeat the Royal Navy, so shall we work tirelessly to defeat the Americans and Japanese. With the new Plan Z, we shall break the IJN and USN over our knees, leaving the door open to total conquest wide open. That's another one, too. Um, no, that's not good. Ah, yes, very good. And you're also going to help put down a lot of resistance here. Um, actually, it's not too bad right now. Ooh. And there's another common thing I should have not taken out Denmark. I should have annexed it peacefully. Um, that would have actually given us more divisions, more manpower, and stuff like that. So my apologies. I didn't know. Like, as you can tell, this is my first playing ca campaign doing Goring. So we'll see. We'll definitely see. Um, let's do stuff that we have to actually get done. So we, we're making cruisers. We're making battleships. I would like to get a few carrier hulls as well. Even though it's important for us to get some of these uh, armaments as well. So get some heavy batteries because we have a lot of naval stuff to research. Because I want to make sure when we strike against America, that we will be okay. That's my greatest concern right now. That we won't be okay when the American Navy just starts rolling out. Overall, though, our industry is looking very good. I mean, look at all those millions. How many millions do we have? This is the only campaign where I'm actually building a ton of military factories in TNO. So many. Our industrial base is looking not too bad. GDP, and how's that going? 17 half billion? Ah, we can add more. That's fine. No such thing as obsolete. 
Though our battleships have seen limited use since the end of World War II, there are still numerous admirals in the Kriegsmarine that are left over from those times. These masters of the waves ran rings around the British back in the day, slowly destroying the English Navy with their skill and intellect and speed. The fact that we've barely utilized them since these days is almost criminal and we m criminal and must be changed at once. By coming to these experienced admirals, we shall get the insight we need to repair and reflect our battleships to become the new masters of the waves. With their experience, no flaw shall be overlooked, no opportunity to improve will be missed. We shall use those that dominated the Second World War to get the Kriegsmarine into tip-top shape for the third, and soon everyone from Norfolk to Tokyo will tremble at our behemoths and Atlantic veterans. Our attempts to renovate our battleships are reported to be a resounding success so far, thanks to the experience and insight of those who commanded them decades ago, however. Through these, though these admirals have been invaluable in their help, the fact remains that some of them have become simply too old for active service. Those of the younger class of admirals so eager for command in the Kriegsmarine have little experience in the field. The Kriegsmarine has not been in any major action since the Second World War. After all, an experience and their inexperience shows. If no solution is found in all, then we will be sending rookies into battle against our enemies who have greater experience in the art of naval warfare. Such a situation will be a disaster for asking, or be asking for disaster. Luckily, the solution is right in front of our eyes. By using our experienced admirals as teachers for the young blood entering the pool, we shall train them to fill the shoes that our old leaders will leave. Every officer shall know the ins and outs of our naval doctrine, and we shall rest easily with knowing that knowledge with. When the old guard inevitably blow bows out, our young faces shall take over with grace and ease, and lead us to a victory as great as that in the 40s. And we're going to, um, ooh, we get naval bases, which is actually really nice. Match them. Dock air construction speed, that's not bad. Honestly, I just want to get to these extra five bonus naval dockyards. Ooh, super carriers. That's not bad. We only have one. And carriers, at the, at the time it's recording, the meta for carriers, it, it's not there, man. It's not there. Carriers are just a force multiplier. You don't want to just have carriers. Oh, oh, God, that's really nice. More capital ship attack. Navy hit you. Oh, Jesus Christ. But we're going to challenge the US and an IJN because we can get these dockyards and then we're going to focus on something else in the focus stream. Despite the clear improvements made in our naval power over the course of the past few months, it seems that the message has not yet made it to those in Norfolk and Tokyo. Our rivals as cocky and foolish as ever seem to believe that the Kriegsmarine is a sick man of the sea. While this may have had some weight back in the day, one only needs to take a look around the hustle and bustle of Theodor Rixhofen to know these allegations are false, and now falls upon us to prove our strength to those imbeciles from east and west. Soon exercises on a scale never before seen shall rock the Black Sea. Our opponents shall see this and be silenced by a tide of fear and terror, and they shall know that the Kriegsmarine is no sick man. No, the Kriegsmarine is a tide of steel and gunpowder ready to crush whichever nation is unlucky enough to stand in our way. We shall teach these upstart admirals why the nations surrender and are allied us so quickly. We shall teach them fear, and they shall know that the Kriegsmarine owns the waves. Good, and I just want to get through that one just because, like I said, we gotta get through it quickly. And we've spent a, an extra 100 days already. Like, wow. We're getting more fuel, and actually we're training our Navy right now to get even more naval XP as much as possible. Because when we want to do naval adoption, I want to hit the road going. Just go, 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 go. Actually, do we have any other ships? No, we only have these guys. So we have one carrier, which is okay. It's not great. And two battleships, which is... Oh, they're early battleships. Oh, why? Anyway, so the next one, and we got to keep an eye on what's going on here. Knights of the Panzer Corps will be nice. Armor soft attack and armor speed, 15 and 10%. That's really nice. Armor every grenadier. Oh my gosh, that's so good. But I do want to do Pride of the Reich eventually. Um, honestly, I didn't realize. Like I, Before I started this episode, I didn't realize that we paratroopers don't exist in TNO. I really didn't think. So doing this side, this one's worthless. Because we don't, we can't pair drop. Well, maybe I don't think we can. We, paratroopers don't exist, so. But this is okay, and this one's not too bad either. But I want to do strategic defense because I want to get more nuclear stockpile. So strategic defense. War in the age of nuclear weapons in many ways differs from pure conventional war. If we are to ensure that the Reich's defensive capabilities are up to the task, then we have to concentrate the existing expertise. Let's found a council dealing with strategic defense. The nuclear strategische Rat shall serve us well. And I want to make sure we actually do a lot of this. Um, Infrastructure stuff. Obviously, we'll be making a lot more military factories, but I did see that we have a lot of stuff that needs to get repaired. So, we just got to be ready for everything here. So, um, oh yeah, I'll probably ask these guys too. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I wish we could make puppets. I wish we could make a puppet out. Can we make puppets out of Poland? Oh, we did take them out, like quite literally, but still. But still. And go ahead. Cool. All right, who do we have here? Oh God. Nice. I um, mean, only 12 combo with, which is my fault, cause whatever. But uh, still. And they should be coming out very soon. Because these guys are the 14 combo with ones. So not too bad. But I will like literally delete these divisions later on. Because you can see here, they're not reinforcing for some god-awful reason. So it is what it is. Actually, how many... Uh, we're looking really good on anti-air now. We're looking good on a lot of things except for casts. Attack helicopters are looking very good. So I'll, we'll use those as well. How many more days do we have? 
Oh, not about 90 days. Not bad. Strategic defense. Good, good, good. Throw you right there as well. And we'll keep going with uh, Titan Atomic Security. Yes, please. The nuclear missile silos are the hot piece of our nuclear strategy. However, in the past, the silo staff and commanders were a cauldron of Spirats, Bomanites, or even the SS. This is not a mistake the Fuhrer will repeat. Only the most loyal men handpicked by Goring and Shorn of themselves shall oversee such a vital task. Very good. And also, do we have anything else down here yet? We just have to complete the last one, so that's fine with us. Because this won't be too bad. Oh, I really want to attack the Balkans next, though. If, if that's possible, I don't know. And we're actually still using those guys, too. And we're using some tactical bombers, but whatever. Who sits the chairman's chair? Goring poked, or poked at the pork dinner that had been brought in to him in his office at the Reich's Council Live. And his mind, of course, somewhere else. Heinz noticed that his uncle's absent expression cut him. Still thinking about the Defense com Committee chairmanship, it seems like such a small thing to, let, to distract you, to me at least. Goring shook his head side to side. I wish it was just that simple. I wonder if this is what drove Adolf to his grave so early. His nephew swiftly swished his port coolly. So what is it then, if I may ask? Uh, Herman grunted uh, sardonically. It's what's always been going on, the battle for power. I've played the game for decades now, but it's never been so grating. The chairmanship is just one piece of the larger puzzle. Shona would have had me place General Tolsdorf in the position. Heinz raised an eyebrow as he finished his glass. I've met him before, I believe, as at the War Cabinet meetings. He seems competent enough. Competence isn't, isn't the issue, Gorman. Gorman. Goring grumbled. He's fully committed to Shorner, and I just can't let them think they can run the Reich under my nose. I ought to put you in charge, you know, only they'd throw a fit. Well, Heinz was plainly paying close attention now. I wouldn't reject such a position, but I can't say I really want Bloody Ferdinand to have a grudge against me. No, 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 Goring said emphatically. <sighs> no, you don't, Heinz. His fingers began to drum on the table. What if we put Bowman in? He owes... Everything to me, be sure. But everyone knows how committed he is to the militarists. He'd be a good compromise candidate. The fear turned to his nephew. What do you think, Heinz? Now, there was another comment saying that we should sideline the militarists as much as we possibly can. So, yeah. Try, always try to sign them. Sideline them. Increase the influence of the militarists. Loyalty goes up. I think we'll take the job after all. Best to go with Borman. Uh, decrease the influence and loyalty. Ah, that's fine. I think we'll take the job. Anyway, so, so, that was another comment. Another comment was, uh, can we go to war with everyone? Like, what about... Someone also recommended that I remember that the oil crisis will hit later on in the campaign. And someone also recommends I focus on the focuses that will go away when the next war plan is activated. Which I'm not sure. Did some of these things leave us? I'm not really sure, so. Um, yeah, I guess maybe. Um, yeah, and I already mentioned that it should have peacefully annexed Denmark. A lot of you guys said don't always declare war on people. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you can, always silent the militaries and be careful if Italy gets nukes. Which I wasn't actually really about realizing that they can get nukes. Because they get nukes very late in the game, but they can still get nukes. God, I want the sun gun. Um, I, don't, I might just do and the troops, just because... I want to see what's going on down here. Hmm, much like our employment of a pivot in, in the 1940 followed Gelb operation guaranteed a lightning victory against the Reich's various opponents. Perhaps the mass consumption and performance enhancing drugs and substances will prove to better the standing and battle readiness of the German Wehrmacht. Thus, it's best we explore this concept by testing supposed performance enhancing drugs on our already competent soldiers. This will surely make them competent in even greater measure, granting them combat strength and focusing their abilities to superhuman extents. What could possibly go wrong? So, 70 days, not bad. Corruption is very small, so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, I want to annex them. Forming five new Reichsgaus, providing 50% non-core manpower bonus in states with Dutch culture. Uh, we'll do it now anyways. Look at that. Beautiful. So it's not core. I wish we could core it. I really did. I really do. We get more manpower, but I do want their factories. That's one of the reasons why I wanted them under us. I do want their factories. And we're already building stuff here anyways. Okay, so we're building the dockyards. I want more. I don't care. I want more. More dockyards. At least get one line. I'm not asking for much. Just one more line at all times. Ah, thank you, GGL. Looking beautiful as always. And we're we doing anything here. Passive defense, that's fine. Uh, spending, yeah, spending, yes. Just keep keep going, boys and girls. You're doing great. You're not building it enough, but you're doing great. We're building only two cities now. Compared to, like, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of uh, other stuff. Very good. Actually. Yeah, I want I, I want new silos first before we do other plant stuff. While the current nuclear silos are sufficient in keeping the threat up the threat of MAD, they are still too concentrated in certain locations and thus we risk being wiped out in a decapitation strike before we can retaliate. Thus, building up new and more importantly spread out silo installations in all corners are vital to the defense of the Reich. That one's more important to do first. And, oh, at first I thought, where did this thing go? Oh, we're still doing okay. We could do some army exercises, but I do want to keep our PP. I don't know how much we're going to need later on. Um, I would like, you know, if we're going to get 150 for two of these and three of these, you might as well just do the one for 300 and get them all done. 
So, Baltic Germans integrated. Ooh! Naturally, the first and easiest of Ostland's territories to integrate have been those which were majority German before he even arrived. The Baltic Germans were the most immediate and grateful beneficiaries of our rule and quickly adapted to life under the Reich. Natalist programs and family unifications, encouraged in the years following the liberation, helped greatly to expand their numbers to the point where they now comprise the majority of the population in Lithuania. With Baltic reduced to a minority, the Fuhrers proclaimed these areas to be pacified and ready for complete integration into the Reich, further expanding the formal borders of the Reich proper into the former Reichskommissariat. The the legacy of the Teutonic Order, the Führer stated in a press release, has finally been fulfilled! German today, German tomorrow, German forever. It's kind of like the whole segregation saying, today, tomorrow, forever. The first parts of Ostland shall be integrated into the Reich, forming two new Reichsgau, or Gawa. 30% non-core manpower bonus in all states with Baltic German culture. Nice. Nice. I love it. It's awesome. Just don't look at the debt. Debt is but a number. Just like age? Hmm. Anyways. Hmm. We're not going to pull a barrier here. Ah, battleship holes, yes, yes. Unfortunately for those, we're not going to make them just yet, because I'd like to get some uh, nuclear reactor uh, stuff here. Ooh, reliability goes way down, but my speed goes up. Ooh, 12 knots. Ooh. How fast, how speed, how speedy are these guys? Five, ooh, five knots. Oh, that's carrier hole. Uh, these guys are 11 knots. Okay, so it's just going to be slightly more... Uh, tw uh, speed plus 40%. Do we need... Do we need this one? Production cost 4,500. Mm, that's so much more production cost. But you don't need fuel for that. Which might be... Um, mm, mm. I'll do it anyway. Screw it. I don't know. That's my first campaign do, use, actually using something like that. So we'll see. Gotta keep an eye on this. 41 days left. New nuclear silos. Although we loathe to admit it, we need to address the state of our nuclear silos. In essence, many of our underground storage facilities have begun to decay. While the situation isn't critical, a substantial amount of work needs to be done to get our many launch sites in acceptable working order. Foundations need to be checked, missiles need to be maintained, supplies and stockpiles need to be replenished, as well as many other minor details. We can be satisfied with repairing our many silos, but a select few officers have been approaching us with a more unconventional solution. Building and rebuilding our stockpile of nuclear missiles into an armament forces that can be launched anywhere at any time. It is indeed something our engineers toyed with in the past, but in the end, the Reich decided that storing all of our nuclear armaments and silos was the best option. However, with the stabilization of Germany and the Einheitspact, as well as the sudden influx of massive funding into the military, we can, after decades of test stagnation, consider affording a project to give our nuclear capacity the ability to strike from any part of German territory. Our missile silos are more than adequate, or mobility will give us an extra edge over our enemies. Increase loyalty by a small amount. Increase power by a small amount. Um, greatly increase loyalty. I like that. I like the mobility. Yeah, I like the mobility a whole lot. It costs more? Awesome. What about water? I, I don't know, it just says that, like, the military's power decreased based on corruption and the amount of pipes built. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen to that. I mean, it's probably not worth going down here, but I do want to help the, the people, right? We're doing this for the people, right? Right? Because I do want to get the sun gun eventually, too, but still, still. But then again, we need to do the stuff like this as well. Oh, oh God, that's... Ah, what about the water first? Regrettably, the liquid of life doesn't exactly do much in the way of battle. Let's change that, shall we? Indeed, the time has come to wonder what about the water and make it useful in our success as a nation. It is therefore necessary, with a formal recommendation of the GGR GGCRI, that the government begins to pump fluorine, the mo most w electronegative element, into the Reich's water supply. We have undertaken this despite considerable protests from our nation's private sector who claim it will destroy the toothpaste industry. We have assured Fear Goring that the fluorine will deliver improved health and, more importantly, keep the population docile and also prevent tooth decay. We're looking out for the people here, man. We are really are. Ooh, ASM batteries? Sure, why not? I'm, I'm going... I think I'm digging too much into this stuff. Nuclear cruiser reactors. Uh, let's make sure we keep doing this stuff, too. That's a little bit ahead of time. We need some medium batteries. Um, I think this one's... This one should be the light battery. That's, that has piercing, yeah. So we need both of these before we really try to... Well, we can actually start making them, but still. Where are we at? We're here with this stuff. Um, improved, improved cruiser hole. I kind of like that. Oh, wait. Why is this above here? I, just, I guess these guys are the new ones. Uh, what do we have? Like, I I don't know that much about this stuff. Because I don't ever use a Navy at TNO. Uh, radar 2, we want Radar 3. We've got... That's not bad. Anything here? 2, oh, we got to go 4. Does it, hurt sp it does hurt her speed. Did you get oh, more than double the soft attack? Alright, why not? And what do we have here? Well, we'll use these guys for now. Uh, you guys are doing what? Uh, hold on. You are what? 120 millimeter RF cannons. Huh. What are you guys on? Heavy batteries? That's fine. You guys are what? 
Secondary batteries. Oh, you are secondary batteries. Um, anti-air here is not great. Uh, well, what aircraft? I'm gonna land flip an aircraft here. I think that's kind of okay with what we have right now. That's okay. Uh, before ship armor is still okay, and we don't have aircraft facilities. I would like one of these. Get more surface detection and sub detection. Ten and three and a half. Seven and two and a half. Design cost. This costs a, just a little bit more. Helicopter pad, yeah, definitely. Cool. Awesome. And these guys of the Mokta class. Uh, what is this one? Basic cruiser hull. Basic battleship hull. You're done. Well, whenever you get done. And you, uh, the carrier class, which is okay. Um, I guess get rid of that one. That one's fine. Dual class. Battleships are built for sheer firepower. I apologize for this. It's just that I don't ever spend time with Tino's Navy stuff. Battleships. I thought we would get rid of this stuff before. Basic cruiser, improved cruiser hull. That's the one we want. So we can get rid of this one. We're going to upgrade these guys. This one is okay. And this one is a cruiser, right? Yep. Rush duck are frigates. There you go. Alright, so for now, I know we're working on other stuff, but I just want to make sure we get some better armor. We get some more speed. We get some of that. We get some of this. Um, get some anti-air 4, rapid fire guns, or, f wait, this is considered a heavy cruiser, crap, crap, I want light ones, light, 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 light battery 2, it slows us down just a little bit more, but that light attack goes up, I love it, um, where is it, rapid fire guns, light battery 2s, and you guys should be, mine warfare would not be bad, torpedo launchers, that would not be bad, but we have no ASW, do we? Mine Warfare? Mine Lang? Medium batteries would be nice, but no. Um, Anti-air, secondary batteries, aircraft, aircraft facilities. We already had that, though, with the helicopter over there. I apologize that I'm taking so long. I apologize once again. Secondary batteries? No, I, I want rapid fire. Rapid fire. Wait, why was it so we considered that one? There we go. That's the last one. Okay, cool. Um, go with more of this stuff. Anti-air effort is not really great, though. Eh. Yeah, whatever. Good. That's what we want. Is this a name? Sorry, I just... You never know about the uh, meta of ships at the time of any recording. Cool. Light cruisers. There we go. There we go. Get two of those light cruisers. There we go. I apologize for that. And keep an eye on this. 29 days, we could wait, but I'm a, I'm going to keep waiting for now. As well, it's going to take less than a day to kill them all, so. Fine with us. Because I want as much time to build, 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 build. Public concern, military concern. Oh, you know what? We don't have to do anything. Let's do this one. Final ultimatum. Oh, uh, let's see. Despite a repeated attempt at coaxing, threatening, and pleading with the Slovakia to rejoin the Rax, the breakaway state stubbornly refuses negotiations. This cannot be allowed to persist, lest we show weakness. The fear of attention shall have been has been brought to bear on the disloyal Reich's protected rot. Should they refuse this direct order to submit, they will very no well know the consequences. And we could do that. We have 10 days, so we'll do it about 14 days, maybe. I don't know. 14, 20 days. Which we're actually... We're pretty much there already, so... Eh, I'll do this one. Why not? Slovakia refuses. In an incomprehensibly foolish move, it seems that the Slovakians are unwilling to bow to our ultimatum. In a strongly worded letter today, the Bratislavan government told her fear in no uncertain terms that Slovakia will ever again bow to German domination. This is by far one of the most confusing or confounding letters to ever cross Goring's desk. If we thought that the nations like Poland had no chance, a nation as small as weak as Slovakia will fall within a matter of days to the German war machine. In any case, such a response, though unexpected, was planned for a, a, was planned for. a hair army lines the border, waiting on our word to invade and crush these rebellious upstarts for good. With a comical difference in size, training, and equipment between our army and theirs, this operation should take no longer than a week, or even a day, really, to complete. Before long, German boots will march through the Bratislava, and Slovakia will learn its place is our inferiors, nothing more. They should think of keeping them around at all. How many days do we have left? 18? 
Uh, oh, also Germans integrated! Further afield from the coast of Ostland lies Belarus, once packed to the gills with Balts and Slavs, though we managed to find dis decent support against the Soviets there. Although, along with a sizable number of racially acceptable natives suitable for Germanization, the East called and our colonists answered. What followed the conquest of Belarus was the emergence of distinctly colonial German culture, fierce, strong, and hardy. The Ost-Germans have brought the virility of the Aryan race to this backwater, sowing the fertile seeds of the German people and the rich farmlands and verdant forests. With plenty of colonists present, the racially acceptable natives being rapidly assimilated and the reminder remained or pushed to the fringes of society. The fear is also seen fit to formally integrate these parts of Austin into the Reich. The Ost Germans are the truest children of the Aryan race in the East. He explained to a crowd of eager reporters today, it is long past time that the efforts in bringing the light of civilization to the frontier are recognized. Ost Germans never die. Following two nights, Reichsgala. 30% non-core manpower bonus. Great. Great. Love it. Alright, give us about another day. And here we will go. Even though we need 10 days. March on Bratislava. While their bravery is commendable, the Slovak state has refused all diplomatic attempts at a peaceful reunification. Fear Goring will not tolerate this insolence. Their troops will be mobilized, supplies requisitioned, and targets marked. If Slovakia will not follow the example of a loyal protectorate, then Slovakia will become one. Oh, wait. Oh, it's active, so we go to war immediately with them. Yeah, uh. Yeah, they're not wrong, and they're brave, but just stupid. Ho! Oh, we didn't. Okay, we won. <laughs> Yay! I love it! Oh, oh crap, we have to meet... Oh, beginning within four months. Holy crap. Uh, what is War Plan A? Nice. Oh, we can't do this one yet. Plan Zero has been completed. We have submitted our place in Europe. Wait. The military's mechanic has been disabled. Has completed focus. War Plan A. Um... Uh... Uh, hello? Senor, we completed it. Ah, performance enhancing drug program begins though. The first deployment of Stas Plan 15. 24 began today at classified location with men of the elite Falschemjäger. The program consists of a number of serial injections of highly classified drugs containing multiple types of hormones such as steroids. The men will be observed over the next week to ensure that they are coping with the administration of the drugs before the next batch of soldiers undergoes the same process. Already in performance tests, the doped soldiers are running faster and lasting longer than the control group. Some members of the Wehrmacht have expressed their doubts about the program, citing health risks to the soldiers. The Führers ignore these complaints and order the program to continue. The German Grenadier will be able to take on any amount of subhuman soldiers single-handedly with his new stimulants. I love stimulants. Hmm. But anyways, I do want to see, like, we have a couple days left. I, I mean, I'm ready to go. Um, saving off the inevitable. We can loot the Netherlands. Hmm. 35% chance that we'll unable to be able to integrate the Dutch. I don't like that chance. Once selected, we lose support war and stability, and we lose two cities. I don't think that's worth it. As much as we can loot, I don't want to loot. Oh, Operation Fruling. Oh, we got this one too. Okay. Okay, so, Eternal Affairs. The rebellious Slovakian military forces dismantled and their treasonous government ousted. Now is the time to root out dissent before it goes underground. While the partisans are small in number, the memory of the revolt must be erased. The collaborative government and the OKW have butted heads on for how to do so. Slovakia favors the use of police in order to infiltrate potential cells and destroy them quietly, whereas OKW wants a fire and brims on show of force. The fear will show us diplomatic skill and strength to force a compromise. Or Rex Commissar Slovakia. Never again will we allow the Slovaks to govern themselves. They've proven themselves to be untrustworthy and rebellious. Installing one of our own to govern the pacified state is the only logical option for the Fuhrer. By propping up an insider, we will have uncontested control over Slovakia and its resources. Better yet, our glorious Fuhrer has a candidate in mind or rebuild the regime. The arduous task of rebuilding the collaborative government falls to the Reich. Whether with malice or charity, there must be a new system installed so that the Slovak state can never again resist our will. Propping of a government of and by Slovaks will greatly ease tensions between the Reich and its protectorate for a long-lasting beneficial relationship. Building it back up? I want internal affairs. The well, hunt resumes. The headlights of the car sliced through the dock and streets of Bratislava as the four men looked for the target. One held a phot photograph to the hot flashlight. They knew who he was, they knew what he looked like, and they knew what he would be. A local professor loudly anti German and suspected ties to the Slovakian communists. The quintessential academic and one that Germany would not could not tolerate. The headlights lit up a solitary man dressed in a trench coat and the men inside ready the pistols. He turned towards the car and for a moment all four men could see the sudden fear flashing through his eyes as he burst into a run. The driver slammed on his brakes and the three men leapt out of the seats, chasing 
chasing him into a dark alley. As the man ran for the next road, he realized his mistake. The alley had nowhere to take cover, nothing to hide behind. The point was punctuated with three sharp cracks of gunfire lighting up the walls like a camera flash, and the man collapsed with a thud. One man rolled over with his foot, comparing the image to the corpse, nodding to his colleagues when he confirmed the next target. Silently, they dragged the body into the trunk of the car and sped away. Order at any cost. So, you guys recommended that we do not... Um, Increase the power of the militarists and sideline them as much as possible so we can rebuild the regime. So we'll try that one. Building it back up. Why had the collaborationist government in Slovakia failed? The question pervaded in Goring's head, rising to the top every time he had a moment of peace, banging around in his mind like a pinball. It made no sense. Decades of subservience, quite obedient, and then suddenly they had to jump ship from Germany as fast as they could. All the way back up to the Burger Creek. For the few reports that ever came from Slovakia were mundane, peaceful, quiet, boring reports nobody gave much mind to. Why would they? They start going like a lightning bolt. The reports are so incredibly wrong because the Slovakians have been hiding their intentions. While well, they had paid lip service to the Reich, they had been secretly planning their betrayal for years. It all fell into place, the sudden change in heart, the resistance to German control, all of it. As Goring figured it out, the plan began to fall into place. The collaborationist government would be restored as expected, but they would never again get so much autonomy. Oh, my apologies. The Reich had taken its eye off the ball, and Slovakia had exploited it to the fullest. Now, the Reich's eyes would be glued to Slovakia, and the army would be ready to sweep in in an instant a single piece of the puzzle tried to fall out of place. This embarrassment would never happen again. Not under Goring, but not anyone under Go after Goring, and not again after a thousand years. Never again. And I just want to see this. I just want to see the loyalty of everyone here. So, influence is very low, which is good. Power is very high, and approval is high. Okay, cool. Well, you're back, you pieces of doo doo. You look like a Russian flag there. Alexander Mach. Very cool. Alright, so now can we do the, the plan? I hope we can. Plan A? Ah, War Plan A. Now that the Reich's control over the Central Europe, Europe has been reestablished, the Wehrmacht is already looking to the Balkans, Scandinavia, and the British Isles, and the rest of the Reich's commissariat in the East. War Plan A will involve securing control of these vital areas through German steel. This should not only restore the Reich's pre Civil War territory, but also bring order to the nations still defying us in the Baltic and the Balkans. But. We don't have to do that immediately, right? So we're going to take our time. So instead, we're going to go ahead and do new missile designs. Ooh. I like missiles. Enter on Deckel. That's really cool. I like that. Repair stuff. Eh, that stuff's okay. We can get away. You know what? I did say we do this one. So, uh, a system to increase GDP together with inflation. Okay. For p political capital. You know what? You guys said you wanted this, so I'm going to try it. The old Metallurgische Forschungsgesellschaft may have been disbanded in 18, 1938, but its legacy, the MEFO bonds of armed, deeply hidden inside the Reich's books, once the means to hide or armament from the prying eyes of the British and French. The bonds have proven their effectiveness in the World War three times over. The Führer believes such an instrument has proven its usefulness before and will do so again. The new old Metallurgische Forschungsgesellschaft and a new set of MEFO bonds are just what is needed to boost our newest rearmament campaign. As for paying them back, well, we'll find a way. Elsewhere. You know what? Let's do another focus too, because since we're here, because we can. Because we can! The power of the atom! Ooh, I like that one a lot. I like the atom, but I won't do next to the Panzer Corps. The distinguished and renowned Panzer Corps must be continuously reviewed and modernized if we were to truly succeed in creating a modern bloodstream. We'll outfit our Panzer Corps divisions with the finest warriors in all of the German Reich to ensure our campaigns against the degenerates of the world are successful. These prestigious knights shall be at the forefront of German propaganda and shall be given various honors commending their bravery and heroics. Under our thumb, the people of Bratislava barely knew what hit them first. The truckloads of German soldiers and tanks rolling all over any opposition directly to the city center, tearing down the Slovak flag and pulling out the swastika in its place. Then the German soldier left, and the people in the city managed to take one final breath before the next wave came. The Waffen HG, the HD standing for Hinka's God, was oppressive in its actions, brutal in its punishment. What On what seemed like every corner and every square, a German soldier watched over the crowds with rifle in hand. The people quickly learned to fear them, and soon the streets were quiet. No more demonstrations of furious speeches, only the sound of cars and footsteps, all washed over by the Germans. The people hated the Waffen HG, but what could they do about it? They had been disarmed, destroyed, and overwhelmingly crushed by a monster far, far greater than any of them. Even if, by some miracle, they succeeded in expelling the German beasts, they just come right back with the tanks again. And this time, Slovenia, or Slovakia now, would never get another chance. So the Slovakian people, by and large, gave up, as they should. Their only hope now is that some bigger monster, whenever, whether external or internal, would eventually destroy the current monster. For now, however, they would have to throw in the towel the end of a short era, which they deserve that. How dare you rebel against us. So we still have MEFO bills here, um, it's just like the one, you know, historically. Uh, issue a six-month extension of the MEFO bills to go in effect upon the due date of the current batch of MEFO bills. I probably should have done this one before, but honestly, I don't think it really does anything for us. The cost of each extension will progressively increase until war breaks out, at which point reliance on the bills are removed and payment is delayed until the, after the war's conclusion. It's going to hurt us later, oh, later on, but whatever.
I don't really care too much. Uh, close out of those two. Okay, cool. And also, people did remind me in the comments. I did check the comments again. That uh, we need to... Or we can have the ability to d disable the timers, disable mad, and stuff like that. So, um, I'm gonna let's just go ahead and finish this out with our land auction. I think that'd be good. Finish it out. Old Nung's bullet sign in Slovakia. Goring looked at his new reporting courageously. He looked back up at the secretary, then back down to the paper. Is this a joke? No mind fear, this is all serious information. Goring slumped in his chair with a frustrated sigh. The Slovakians of all nations were giving him this much grief. It wasn't like there were any real threat to the Reich, but this festering sore on Germany's underside was taking a hundred German lives a month. What was wrong with the Slovaks? When God made them, clearly he had forgotten to put in the quid. There was an easy way to solve this, of course, expanding article operations in the Slovakian region, after all. Could local forces be trusted with occupying their own nation? No. Such an arrangement was begging for disaster. The ARPA would control Slovakia, and would learn to be obedient, calm, and placid. Slovakia would learn order. Whether they learn it through gunfire diplomacy would be up to them. Maybe though now they'll learn their place. Decrease the power of the militaries? Nice. Okay, so we have one here. Um, let's go. I want to get at least two cities at all times, because we got a lot of build. We have a lot to build, my friends. And we're still doing quite well in uh, producing things. Tech bombers, I don't really care about. Chaos is looking a little better. And... ABC is looking pretty good, too. Actually, where is the... Attack helicopter 600 some 600 not bad armor every grenadier for even more tanks in order to restore the image of a proper grenadier division we must see it to it that our tanks shall be fitted with proper armor from now on while our grenadiers may prove to be the greatest propaganda tools in the eyes of germany our efforts will be in vain if they are without proper equipment to the factories and war plan a of course um well i've already read that one but we got some other stuff we want to do first oh what is this ah another false mega uh, that's okay, you're all going to be together anyway, so it's it's fine with us. Um, who's in Warplan A? Who? So, oh, okay. Someone recommended that we do the British Isles last. I'm going to do the Balkans first. Um, they're not in... There's no Italian faction yet. We'll attack the Hungarians first with you guys, so that'll be okay. Um, since we're here anyways, you guys can stop training. Um, mm, this looks okay. I will try to flood this area with transport helicopters, maybe? We'll see what happens. You guys are fine. Romania will be a little bit pain in the butt to do, so... Honestly, you guys just all kind of hang out. Don't worry about setting up any sort of line like that for now. Do something like that. And train. Just because I want these guys to be as perfect as possible. So... 87 days, so, which is pretty nice. Actually, yeah, like I said, there's like nothing here for MFO bills, but side effects. Doctors observing the Staus plan 15.24 development are reporting a number of side effects, both physical, mental, and soldiers undergoing the experimental treatment. Test subjects are reporting withdrawal like symptoms when the drug injections are delayed. Others are becoming violent and irrational with at least two soldiers forcibly removed from the program for treatment at a nearby asylum. The Greater German Reich Council on Scientific Innovation has advised that the program be halted immediately, setting the risks of German soldiers. While a small group of researchers believe that if the program is not terminated, a more stable version of the drugs could be found and implemented. The fear is attending an emergency meeting with the GGRCSI, after which a decision will be handed down. Darn it, cover these accidents and keep on going. Ooh, army professionals keep going down. Terminate the program, it's not worth the risk. What? Addicted soldiers. Rapidly worsen. We're going to keep going on with this. If this is poorly, goes poorly, we might just change things up, but we'll see what happens. Military concerns, only 0 .05. Um, But the GR does not work in a vacuum. And should either the concern of the militaries or the civilian population, civilian population reach 100% because of several pro projects, should force us to shut down the whole endeavor. That kind of sucks. Alma, have a good idea. That's very good. And Legacy of the Ghost Division, because we can. First in the line of fire, first in the hostile land, the elite Panzer Division, known as the Ghost Division, has gained incredible fame throughout their oppressive offensive blitzkrieg during the last war. The Ghost Division has proven the strategic ability of tanks on the battlefield, and we must never forget this if we are to create a flexible and independent armored units. Leaders of the Panzer Corps will be given extended logistical support, as well as more freedom to move independently on the battlefield. This way, our tanks shall strike at an enemy built with a ferocity and surprise never seen before. Followed up with more stuff over here to the left, because I want to get this stuff done. What about the water? Well, we'll do that one next, so. Economic department? Or economy department? Nice. You know what? It's only 20 pp, right? Because if we don't select it, we hit, get hit by 20% consumer goods, so. It's only 20 pp. It's alright. Completed. Nice. Very good. Very good. 68 days. Not bad. 
Decrease military concerns, slightly more corruption, but that's okay. And we can decrease corruption as well if we need to, but we have enough PP for now. Actually, how are we still building up like normal? Yes, we are. It's good. Non-German regions of Austin integrated. The question of how far the current efforts to integrate Austin should go has been a matter of great contention within the colonial authorities today. The Fuhrer uh, finally stepped in, declaring that with the majority of Baltic and Aust-German lands integrated, the Reich's grip on these formerly troublesome lands is secure enough that there is no further need to worry about the possibility for the resistance from the Balts, Slavs, and Estonians remain in the colony. Accordingly, the aggressive pursuit of Germanization can slow down to a more measured pace. The Fuhrer's reasoning is simple. With their will to fight repeatedly broken and a strong German presence established, the natives pose no threat at this point and the assimilation or displacement is so certain that the Reich can finally afford to ease up, redirecting resources to more pressing matters. The integration of the remaining parts of Austin, be they majority German or native, is to commence immediately and without hesitation. Our race will win out in these areas soon enough. The march of the Aryan race cannot be stopped. 15 new Reichsgauer and 50% non-core manpower bonus in all states with non-German cultures. GDP will receive a large boost. Inflation will decrease. Oh, that's not good. Eh, that's okay. I like that, but oh. Growth is not looking good, man. Not looking too good. And we still got a few days left here. Not bad. Who are you? Not good enough. That's who you are. Actually, 36 army XP. These C battalions are not good. At the very least, make them 20 combo width. More marines. Thank you. Good, good, good. And get some... Yeah, we'll just put the choppers on them anyways. Look at that. That's so good. Defense is not great, but that soft attack is just so good. And that breakthrough is so good. 95 piercing. Literally nothing can stand up to uh, us if we pierce them with that. Jessica helicopters are not bad, but I don't think I really want to use them. Experience loss goes down. Trickle back is not bad, but it's literally half of what the field hospital is. XP loss is 30. Trickle back is 40%. So I'm not really sure there's any use really using those guys. We'll get some artillery for these guys as well. There you go. Hope you enjoy yourself there, guys. Um, get another uh, soldier here, too. Because we will need these soldiers for America. Because America is just too big for just tanks and helicopters. So, Oh, yes. That's good. Nice. And so next, I think we'll just do the other one. The actual war plan. Ah, wait, war plan. Mm -hmm. We can do a short one. We can do a short one. Perfection. What requires about water? The water. Uh, military vision shaft. Oh, they're going to war with whales. Good. Kill them off. Kill each other off, please. Uh, is there anything for seven days here? Fourteen days. Fourteen days. Ooh, seven days, yeah. Special Elite Forces Brigades Einsatzkommando für Special Angelegen Einheiten. Or Heiten. We'll be on Germania. It's not bad. New Missile Designs. 14 days, though. Uh, I want something at 7, so... Pride of the Reich, I'd love to do, but Crisis Response Teams. Decrease the loyalty of the militaries and decrease the power. To survive any crisis means to be properly organized. And uh, since a nuclear war is the ultimate crisis imaginable, it need, need an organization that can handle the crisis. The Fuhrer has just decreed the creation of so-called... <clears throat> my apologies... Uh, crisis response teams that will prepare and help the German people to survive anything that our enemies can throw at us. Very good to be prepared. Keep spending the living crap out of the budget. I don't care if the budget's too big or too small. You keep spending until you die. Alright, so we got that stuff. This is not bad. I don't know if I'll actually, we'll actually throw them on. We'll see what happens. But this will be good to do, but we really need to make sure we have a uh, naval reduction. Um, that's not bad. I don't hurt our naval factor, so we're going to get more blue water navy. We really got to get started on that stuff, so... And so for this one, we just need to complete the focus. And that's a seven days, so we get, we're good. Chemicals in the water. You can't be serious about this. Olsenberg slammed the report down on Goring's desk. The Fuhrer himself looked particularly unimpressed with the show. Putting drugs in the water? Are you kidding? The people will go mad, not because of the drugs. They'll come for your head. Yeah, Olsenberg, please remember that this is a military idea. I simply see potential in it. You know as well as I that these drugs work wonders under soldiers, Goring began. His voice remaining steady, Olsenberg cut him off, forcefully raising his voice. Giving a couple soldiers injections of drugs and pouring drugs into the water supply are completely different things, Hammond. Christ, aren't you dumb enough to, enough to really think this will have an effect, are you? By now, Olsenberg was yelling, and anger flashed across the fear of his face as he motioned for silence. You don't understand, Vanna. This is a military idea. Now, we could use it to help pacify the Eastern Rex Commissariats as is theorized. But we could also use this in military areas, urban, industrial areas, perhaps, to help with the productivity. Maybe get the army to help with that, of course. If this happened to leak to the press, it would be a total disaster for Sean and his men. And we should take every step we can to prevent that. Are you following me? Osenberg stared incredulously at his friend, and the subtle rift that had grown between the two cracked open a little wider. Herman, do you even believe what you're saying yourself? I'm asking not for your opinion on me. I'm asking for your opinion on this. Pacify the East Ra, increase production. Hemmen responded. The two men stared each other down before Osenberg replied. Bokos and Rex Commissariats caused a scandal. Ooh. Ooh. I want to focus on the Rex Commissariats, man. 
military areas. Well, productivity gets the army to double that. If it happened to leak, Toad loses Zessel for Shona and his men. Ooh, I want to do the Rex Comus Rex, but it's already going super well, so you know what? Cause a scandal. <laughs> That's such a bad idea. <laughs> and of course, the Walsh are done. Oh, pipes and oh, pipes in Germania. Once we finish a focus perfection, we will decrease military's power based on corruption. And this will happen once for every city in which we build pipes. Whoa, Danzig. Um, military concern. Corruption's not that bad. Once we finish the focus perfection, you know, on build pipes everywhere. Lots of pipes. The pipes are calling, my boys. I, I, that part doesn't really concern me too much. I just want to just take out enemies. Yeah, go over here too. Crisis response seems not bad. Not bad. Duck and cover? That'd probably be good to do as well. Yeah. That's alright though. War plan A, finally. Oh, Einsatz Commando Division. Yes. Oh, they're only eight combo with. Are you kidding me, man? They do have some scout helicopters, which is okay. Uh, we can't even delete you. We can't even convert you. God dang it. Just send them there. They'll be fine. Whatever. So after War Plan A, we'll probably unlock a few more things here to do, which will be very, very good. Another tier? Yes, please, thank you. Whoa, we actually have more than enough military things here. Why are we not producing things? Because we don't have enough dockyards, that's why. Um, improved jet casts? Sure, you can have that first. We have enough supplies for now, which is good. We, I want anti-air, but at this point, I don't know if we can really use it. I want 40 combat with infantry as well. We're looking really good on a lot of the stuff here, actually. If that's the case... We're looking good on transport helicopters. We're actually looking really good on transport helicopters. We actually have a lot of military factories. Uh, this is okay. We can probably go up to... Four is okay. I want more APCs. Where are the APCs at? Um, APCs, yeah. Go up to two lines of that. Get some more jet fighters. Get, get up to three here. That'll be okay. And more jet casts because we'll use these as literal, literal naval bombers. So that'll be okay. Um, I want two more of these going. Bing bong. And I want at least... Three dockyards now. Three dockyards, because we need to improve ourselves some more. One, two, and... That's not a core, so... Three. There you go. Yeah, look at that cast. It's not good, but hey! War Plan 8 is done and accomplished, my friends! I like the... Oh my gosh! Look at all the stuff that's down here! Holy crap! Oh my gosh! I'm sorry, but... Oh! Oh my gosh! There's so much here! How long do we get to do this stuff? War Plan 8. With our periphery secured, it's time to look out into what used to be part of our great empire. Many of the Rex Commissariats used the chaos of the Germans of war to break free from our grasp. Clearly, this cannot and will not stand. If we're to be taken seriously on the world stage, we need to secure what rightfully belongs to us. It is time to rally the Wehrmacht. We have work to do. Are we not done with this yet? Okay, we do have 400 days. That's actually really nice. So we'll save England for the last part. Actually, they might actually reunite the Isles before we even get down here, which would be great. Oh, oh, Switzerland. Hopefully we can beat Switzerland. How strong is Switzerland? I think we're going to focus on the Balkans first. I want to just destroy the Balkans. Then we'll go to Switzerland, maybe? Ukraine? Muscovine? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Nothing else there. Cool. Ooh. I like this. Iberian economic crash. They were beaten while on the floor. Nice. Yeah, three. Uh, we. I want a bigger navy. That American navy is just... Oh, look. Ooh. A basic battleship horse. Sean horse. Oh, improved. Another carrier, too. Look at that. Uh, for now, just dust stack it together. So that's fine with me. Just keep training, guys. You're doing a great job. We have... Two CVs then, a battle, two battleships then, right? Three battleships, but War Plan A begins, of course. The map of Europe in front of him was large, almost comically so. Goring's mind couldn't help but wander off, considering the general staff meeting had been going on for almost six hours by this point. Jesus. Endless monologues of military capabilities, strategic resources, and the new set of targets, and potential testing grounds for new weaponry had been long and boring enough, but now the officers kept arguing about which area to prioritize. While a welcome distraction at first, the fear quickly found his head aching as argument upon argument was repeated again and again. Not as crucial as our control over the Baltic, the last thing we need is the OFN in Scandinavia. The longer we wait in East, the more it'll remove itself from the grip. The strategic resources of Balkan should have the highest priority. England or Switzerland, either of them are an insidious threat that we must deal with. Enough! Finally, Gen Ma General Field Marshal Schoener intervened, bringing the discussion to an abrupt end. The moment of relief within Goring quickly faded as Schoener's gaze shifted to him. The fear would reside, won't he? There are choices, but indecision isn't one. Actually, who are you led by? Because, ah! As much as I want to wait to get these guys united, Thatcher? Ooh! Thatcher might join the OFN. Can she join the OFN? I think she can, right? Can she actually join us, too? It would be nice if they, she got cooed, though. Carrot and a stick. A great Britain, yeah. Reveal our motive. The fifth superpower of the world. I have played a Satcher before. Free market, free people. Iron Steel Act, let's not go overboard. Um, the Iron Lady of the Isles. So we can't see anything here yet. I think she wants to join the OFN. 
Focusing on the rich south. Okay, we're next. Media Blitz. Okay, cool. Well, Balkans it up first. Look at all the stuff we can do. Holy crap. Operation Sea Line, too. I like that. Oh, and get rid of General Government de Krim. Tannenbaum, that's Switzerland. Nordlich, that's Scandinavia. Hansa, it's probably... Ooh, lessons from Muscovy. Uh, Sweden. Lapland, of course. Um, where was this one? Finland. Margaret. The invasion. Ah, Operation Margaret, the invasion of the traitor nation of Hungary. It would be inaccurate to say that this invasion is for Hungary alone. The worthless Magyars were defeated by the Romanians. Which, what threat would they possess to the might of the Reich? But the strategic position of the nation, nestled as it is between the Danube and the Carpathians, makes it an ideal staging point for the Reich's expansion into the Balkans. Fjörgoring has made his decision whether the traitors of the heirs of the S of St. Stephen are plotting with, it, with the Reich's enemies is immaterial. The strategic position they offer is simply too important to let them remain outside the Reich. And I just noticed, why is this cut off? I guess that makes sense, but still. Um, Tepes? Oh, Romania. Oh, Dracula. Ooh, yes. Them next. Devoid of honor or goodwill, ignoring the gains they made through our blood and sacrifice in Transnistria. The Romanians are a representation of everything wrong with the Eastern mindset. Now it is time to show these dogs that Germany does not forget slights that made against it and always has its due in blood. Oh, yeah. Why is this one? Slovakian remilitarization. In its infinite wisdom, decades ago, our beloved Führer made the decision to liberate the Slovaks from the Bohemian overlords. Yet this liberation was not total, as the Hungarians demanded a share of lands that were not theirs by right or deed. In his generosity, the Führer granted this request, hoping that the alliance forged would lead both the Magyars and Aryans into a glorious future together. But that was a mistake. Whilst the Reich could undoubtedly crush the insect of Hungary in mere weeks, there are many things to do: forces to deploy to a great number of battlefields throughout the Reich, and the assistance of the Slovaks would ease the burdens placed upon Germany by a small amount. In return for surplus tanks, Reich and ammo from our past wars, the Slovaks shall provide both a staging ground and a significant force for Operation Margaret. If they equip themselves well, they may even be granted a reward. Yes, consider this a test. Experience loss will be increased by 20%. Splatting speed, oh, by 30%. Eh, an efficient evasion. Experience gain will be decreased by 20%. Experience loss will be reduced by 20%. Efficient evasion. Um, an all armored assault. Armor attack will increase by 25%. Our infantry soft attack will be decreased by 26%. Overwhelm the border. Okay, so overall... Oh, I like that manpower, though. That manpower's really nice. That manpower. Oh! I mean, we have plenty of enough manpower for now, but... Mm. I don't like the losing max planning. I do want to get more army XP gain. I like being more efficient, though. Jesus, what do I want? I want both. <laughs> anyway, the gates. The Carpathian Fortress. Um, specialized equipment or troops for operations in the Carpathians. I mean, this is going to be a quick war. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be really quick. I want that extra manpower because that's a resource that we could just cannot make more of. Our armor will decrease by 25%. Honestly, I don't care about that too much. It won't hurt us that much. They have 74,000 manpower. They have up to 9 divisions and no armor themselves. Honestly, because we're using so many transport helicopters here and motorized that it won't make a difference. I, let's get more manpower. I think it's better to get more manpower. I don't want to hurt ourselves here. But if you want to worry about an efficient evasion, please go ahead. As well as an all-armored all assault. That manpower, if we take less than 60,000 casualties, this will be better overall. And I do want to get more army experience, because we need to edit our divisions more. Operation Margaret will be an easy one. It will offer no challenges to our troops and no obstacle to our long-term plans. Why, therefore, should we not test our Wunderwaffe that will eventually be used upon the Americans and Japanese in a more controlled environment? It will carry no long-term risk, and most assuredly, it will be more difficult for our foes to piece together the secrets behind our super weapons if we use them out of sight in the Magyar homeland. All weapons require tests, and Operation Margaret is merely a large-scale one before our ultimate victory. And overwhelm the border. German superiority is innate and in question. Why not use it? The simpler plan is the fewer points within it that can go wrong. The plan for Operation Margaret is as simple as it gets from the Carpathian Ruthenia to Budapest. Our troops shall not stop. A massive all out assault along the entire border shall sweep aside whatever paltry forces the Magyars can scramble to defend with. And without a clear front to pace or place soldiers along our surprise shall allow for absolute victory. There are those within the general staff who question if resources could not be better spent, but how better to utilize our armies than proving the invincibility of the German Reich? One, two, three, four, five. Good. How's this looking? Twenty billion. Close. The new school in session. The halls of the war academies across the Reich are filled with the sounds of young officers. These men have seen the great need their fatherland has left in them for competent leaders following the civil war and have nobly stepped up. Many of them are veterans of the civil war itself, having fought for the legitimate heir of Adolf Hitler. While some are young enough that they have only just come of age, but were selected for the aptitude they displayed as members of the Hitler Youth. Perhaps it is due to the unique circumstances of the moment. Perhaps it was always bound to happen, but whatever the reason, these newest officers seem to be a new breed apart from the peers. While most of the armies 
to upper echelons are divided bitterly between rival cliques, most notably those of Shuan and Spado. The new god, as they've been nicknamed, are much less factional. That is not to say they're apolitical, but it cannot be denied that most of the newcomers they have chosen not to favor any one side too heavily. While this has been a blow to the clique leaders, always in need of more allies, it is hopefully a sign that the age of militarists leveraging immense political power may come to an end. At least the Fuhrer hopes that this is the case. In the new god, perhaps there will be a respite from the demons that plague his dreams. Class has begun. And we get Heinz Gunther Guderian. Ooh! Karl Theodor Molinari and Franz Pusch. Awesome. And a quick war, of course. Oh, we can do this one too. Oh, shit. Oh, well. I thought we. This doesn't make any sense. This looks like you have to do both of these. So if that was the case, I would have done an efficient invasion. Oh, much more than that. And then do this one. Oh, well. A quick war. Because I don't want to go quickly to war with these guys as well. Hmm. Let's overwhelm the border first. And then I'm going to do this one first. Because I want to go to war immediately with Romania after our war with the Hungarians. The Southern Front. Our old friends. Meet in Bucharest. Ooh, Coronator Blitz from two sides. We're going to meet the Bulgarians in Budapest. Armies will be 15% faster. Old friends. New tricks. Uh, Balkan has been... Halben cell. Go fetch. All right. The Carpathian Fortress. The primary military challenge in taking Romania comes not from its people, weak and softened by the peace as they are, but instead from its natural formations, the mighty Carpathian Mountains and the Danube River. Serving as supply depots, bunkers, and choke points, the borders of Romania assist in its maintaining its defenses. This does not mean, however, making the nation invincible. Mountains can be flown over and rivers bridged across. Romania has relied on its natural borders to protect its soft heart. But, no more. Oh, wait. Oh, is that only... So yeah, 60,000 manpower, not 600,000. That makes sense. The grip tightens. I like a tight grip. Um, that'd be good. Oh, well, that's the Rex Commissariat. Okay, so that makes sense. Cool. Occupation is tiring work. It is. Through them. Over them. Around them. Uh, infantry soft attack goes up by 6%. Over them. Supply grace period is okay. And around them. Amphibious and naval invasion speed. Naval base construction speed. Naval base. Not dockyard, but naval base will be increased by 30%. That's okay. I think I just want to go straight through them. That's probably painful, but it, let's do it like this. Sometimes a simple solution is the best one, whilst we could create a resource-intensive and dangerous fraught plan to pass the Carpathians. It might be best if we simply take them by force. An armored assault followed by copious artillery barrages on remaining strong points and elite uh, mountain troops recruited from throughout the Reich should be enough to secure at least one of the passes. In truth, we only need one to ensure our victory, which is very true. All right, so we got some of this stuff done, which is nice. I'd like to get this stuff. Piercing attack would be very nice. Carries would be good. I just probably not nuclear stuff for now. Destroyers, sonars. Let's at least get that stuff too. So, yeah, through them. A little more soft attack because we'll throw all of our guys in there at the same time. Good, through them. And then a quick war. The time has come. Preparations have been made, and the plan of attack decided. Our allies are ready. Our troops are eager, and the Führer himself has said the war will likely be over in a week, in a few weeks at most. The Magyar scum who betrayed the Reich in its darkest hour, despite all we had done for them, shall reap which with which they have sowed. Launch Operation Margaret Heil Goring. Heil, Heil, Heil. And when you're done hiling, hile even harder. Enemy aircraft downed. Oh boy. Um, Mind fear, I have some news to report. Something very interesting just happened within our borders. Him and Goring stood up to bring a chair forward and then sat back down with his hands on his desk. What do you have for me? The fear asked, a stern, looking, adding, a stern look adding to his shadowy voice. The officer took a seat and began to recall what he'd seen earlier a few hours ago. The local radar station in Westphalia detected a foreign object in the skies. We attempted to establish communication with it, but once these efforts failed, our SEMs fired on the object. During the attack, we realized it was foreign aircraft, and the plane crashed about 20 miles northwest from Dortmund. Do you know where the plane came from? Him and Goring inquired, leaning back in his chair and interlocking his fingers. Here's why the situation is so good for us. The pilot survived the crash, and when we captured him, we found out that he came from the U.S. Apparently, the Americans were testing out some kind of new spy plane, and they used our country as a test site. Unfortunately, the photos that were taken have already been sent back to the U.S., and the pilot is refusing to give up any information. We can certainly torture the pilot for information, but we need to be careful while the Americans still have the photos. Nevertheless, we have an American hostage, so if we play our cards right, we can get what we want, which is going to be very good, because we're going to save just in case, because we want to do very, very well in this diplomatic crisis, of course. All right, how, now how badly do they want him back? Um, how many planes do we have before we begin? Uh, attack 13, okay. Um, at the very least, let's make these guys have... Oh, we don't have enough army XP. How much would we... Oh, God. Oh, that would look so good. Just so much more strength. So much more breakthrough and soft attack and heart attack. Look at the Black League. Why are they only forming the really tough guys to beat? The WRF and Omsk? Why? Bruh, why? Oh, the CSR's here, too. Ah, Sobbins here. Look at that. 
a captive pilot. After our diplomats exchange some information, the Americans are now fully aware of their pilot being in captivity. President Robert F. Kennedy is furious that we're refusing to let their man go already. He has made it clear that the U.S. wants his pilot back, but right now we're in tr the middle of squeezing info out of him. No matter the outcome of this new crisis, we need to make sure the Americans do not try this action again. We have two options to take. Either we can give in to the President's demands now and send the pilot home, losing respect and prestige, or we can get or hold on to the pilot until they give us back the photos they took while we get more information out of him. Escalate the thing, baby. Escalation. Love it. A traitor's fate. I'm gonna go to war immediately. Fra or fragile handle with care. The Polyeste oil installations are easily broken, and the troops should be instructed to exercise extreme caution around them. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that'd be good. Search the archives. Oh, what's this one? Oil, that most wondrous of materials, Romania's vast quantities of the substance, and strangely enough, it's a highly flammable one. Incendiary weapons may not be the best, most practical of the Wunderwaffe, but instead of the oil fields alight, they will do their job. Launch the bombers, set the targets, and light the world aflame. Nice. And we just finished our land auction, which is great, great, great. Now, I've been neglecting this stuff for a little bit, um, but it's really not that bad. Thank you. And how are you doing? Very good, very good. Yeah, oh. Yeah, look at these divisions. Oh, militia. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry for the horses. I am so sorry. Like, the horses don't deserve this fate. They really don't. They really do not. Oh, that's so sad. I'm so, so sorry. Did we win yet? America sees the photos. We've reached an agreement with Americans regarding their lost pilot. American leadership has notified us that and we will be receiving the photos they took of our territory. In exchange, we will be sending this pilot right back to his home country. We also expect an apology in the coming days, even though we lost the pilot. This is by no small means a diplomatic failure. The Americans simply caved into our demands, and both of us got what we wanted out of the discussions. Our propaganda machine has worked, has, has its work cut out for it. We will certainly use this accident to paint the Americans in a more negative light. Even with this, our citizens are already celebrating the diplomatic victory back at home. The world has been saved yet again from the threat of nuclear war. For now, let's just hope the Americans don't discover the bruises we gave the pilot. These photos look stunning, because they're all pictures of me. Oh, just kidding. Oh. The OFN stands with Hungary. No doubt ushered forward by the firm push from the Zionist puppet masters in the U.S., the weak and effeminate leaders of the Belize have decided to throw in their lot with their enemies in the kingdom of Hungary and send their support against us. Well, a formal war has not been declared, and neither of us uh, nor they uh, dared to strike at one another's supply lines lest we risk a larger war. These fools have firmly planted themselves as enemies of our glorious state. Fear Goring has urged caution with his generals, cutting down a proposal for a declaration of war against the nation, and arguing that these nations can be dealt with in, with future war plans. Still, the insult is clear, and they shall taste our fury one day. Oh, the offense ends with the Kingdom of Hungary. And who is this one? New Zealand. And the U.S. forces Iceland, we don't care about. And Canada. And the Panama Canal Zone. And Greece sends support to Hungary. Despite sharp words and rattled sabers from the finest of our rapidly dwindling diplomatic staff. Greece has sent aid to our enemies in the Kingdom of Hungary. Well, this slight will not be forgotten, and they can no doubt taste a fear in due time. For now, there's little we can do. Striking at their shipping would provoke another war, which at the moment we cannot afford while the Kingdom of Hungary is still a threat. They can be sure, however, that they will soon taste the might of the German war machine. Look at theirs. Iberian Union, Odisha Burgund, Bulgaria, the Yankees oppose us yet again. The foolish Yankees in the U.S., doubtless at the behest of the Zionist puppet masters, have sent forth the planes and their ships to aid the Kingdom of Hungary. While we have sent them a certain diplomatic rebuke, we are forced to ignore this pitiful aid as a direct, direct confrontation could spark a war with the degenerate Americans that we're not yet prepared for. Peter Goring seemed especially distraught of the news, quietly asking his generals if this would mean a larger war. He has shown us suggested no war would come if the Luftwaffe struck rapidly and cowed America into submission after a lightning attack on the shipping. Peter Goring stopped the proposals with the reluctant support of several of his advisors so we're forced to allow the Americans uh, and their fools to operate, operate freely. They'll get theirs. RFK, are you going to die yet? Seriously, what are they doing with charity for all? Because if he goes to Social Democratic or whatever it is... Oh! Then he can't do too much. Okay, so I thought that was there. Yeah, he is... Oh, God. Is this is this glitched? Look at that. The end of the line. Is this glitched at all? I'm not really sure. Maybe not. Maybe it is. Is this supposed to line up? Maybe maybe it's not connected, but... Uh, it seems kind of odd, but... Rude of House, Civil Rights Act, Talk with Malcolm X... I played the RFK. Actually, it's my first president I played as. Technically, in the first campaign after Nixon. But, uh, yeah, I need to play him again. And get him assassinated? Hmm. How many men have we lost? 68? Can you believe that? 70,000 Hungarians have died to our less than 100 dudes. Like, like that's extreme. And we don't even have attack support helicopters. Well, 90,000 died for less than 100. The conquest of Hungary. The Danube flows quietly as the German troops enter Budapest under the silver moonlight and declare the occupation of Hungary. On the next morning, Hungarian citizens can still sit by the river and watch the sun rise on the horizon, but they never see the flag of the Holy Crown flying with the sunlight anymore. From now on, they will be used to live, uh, used to be living under our swastika flags, or they'll just be, of course, shot. 
But simply conquering Hungary doesn't mean that our work has ended. A hundred years ago, when the House of Habsburg crushed the Hungarian rebellion, they had never found a proper way to rule the Hungarians, which eventually led to the failure and dissolution of the corrupted empire. Now, as the monarchist vir viruses have been cleansed from our veins, such a mistake cannot be repeated by us. With the guide of a national socialist doctrine, we will use a way that has been tested many times to govern those vicious Hungarians. The Reichskommissariat Balkan Halbensel, led by General Leo Hap, will be given total control over Hungary and who answer to no one but Germanian itself. No more autonomy, no more dual government. This time the Hungarian people will experience what it truly feels like to live under the German nation's boots. And for the Great War Plan, the conquest of Hungary is a small but significant step from here. It won't be long until we conquer the whole Central and Eastern Europe. Let's party like it's 1849! Can we throw the Slovaks in there? I should throw them in there too. Look at that! I've never seen this one, I think. Maybe I have once, but still. Okay, stabilizing regime. Nothing there, but it'd be cool. They did have unique focus tree, though. Um, good. Wait, did this one actually complete? Oh, one of the following must be true. So we can actually ignore these guys. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Interesting. And actually, I'm going to do this one. Because we all want more arm XP. We, need, we just need more arm XP, and we don't have it, so. Fra ha uh, fragile, handle with care. So with that in mind... Ooh, Masters of the World. What does that do? Um, I don't know. That might give us some benefits, though. Um, occupation is trying to work. Tighten the leash. Uh, that's not bad, but I still want to keep doing this one. Unleash the dogs. I want to max this out here as fast as possible. Send the archives. Um, can we... Oh. Operation Peter. Oh, we can do... Oh! Okay, that's interesting. Um, Rurik. Deal with the loyalists. I do want to keep going to war as we're developing our way to go to war with the rest of the Balkans, so... Five steps ahead. Ukraine, a flight. A light. Deal with the loyalists. There's so much here to do. All loyal to our regime should be given a place in the new Ukraine. Lock them out. What else do we have? Operation Henry. A German Volga. Now, oh, what is this one? Our administration has had, had its hands full dealing with the civil war and its aftermath. While we've been occupied by our own internal affairs, the East has likewise collapsed. Some Russian in the administration had the not-so-brilliant idea to create a sort of two-state solution to stabilize Muscovine. This has resulted in a colony exploding between the two proposed states. When we take a look at the East, evaluate and plan our next course of action. Okay, that means a single day, which is fine, because we got to get through all these done. We can kind of honestly ignore Romania, which I'm kind of surprised at. I thought we'd, we had to get them all done, but it is what it is. But happy June 67, everyone. So we have capital ships. We, oh, we need to get this one. No, oh, we got cruisers, and we've got battleships. I still want to get carriers. Carriers are still useful. They're not extremely great, but they're still useful. So, And how are we building right now? Now roads. Dockyards going along. That's not too bad. Frag fragile. Handle with care. Let's do this one next, because I would like to go to war with Muscovine quickly. Um, a German Volga. Oh, they just join us. Okay, a Russian village. Did they just join us? Oh, we'll go to war with them. Okay, that's, I like that. Um, German Sovereign Zone. A Russian Volga. Um, oh, both of them. Okay. Well, this is pretty quick, so... So we have to go to war with the Moscow autonomy. That kind of sucks, but I think we'll be pretty much ready for them. I mean, how strong are these guys? 35 divisions? No. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. The longer we wait, the easier, the harder it'll become to take them out. A German Volga. To a pleasant surprise, the German settler state, led by Helmut von Panwitz, has come out on top and has somewhat stabilized Muscovy in our absence. While the situation is by no means perfect, we do have a total loyal administration in charge of Moscow. Our first order of business is to promote a new Reichskommissar, and von Panwitz fits the bill perfectly. He shall be rewarded for his loyalty and initiative, and with his help, we shall start rebuilding and reincorporating Muscovy into the pact. An excellent job. In order to cement a rule over this chaotic region, we need to be supportive of our brothers in the east. We shall start with basic aid and help the settlers rebuild what they've lost in the war. Whatever they need, we shall provide. Whatever we can do to help return the stability to the east should be done. They did a very excellent job in collecting money and valuables for us time to collect. Whispers in the barracks. It started out as just a rumor from one friend to the next. One that the, even the friend received passing off as ridiculous. Chemicals in the water? That was some conspiracy level nonsense, on par with believing in lizard people and thinking aliens are mind controlling our leaders. At first the rumors died out in the chain and it got no further than a small circle of skeptical friends. And then it cropped up in a different unit. And then another. And then another. And soon enough, these circles began to run into each other. And the theories only grew wider, wilder from there as each realized that no, they weren't alone. The whispers tore through divisions like wildfire, the theories as to what the drugs were doing growing more and more outlandish by the day, suddenly. It was thought that Goring was trying to poison his enemies, and that Ozenberg was setting up for a coup, that Shona was planning for an execution of those who disliked him, 
that the Jews had infiltrated the highest ranks of the Reich and were planning a mass mind control campaign to destroy Nazism. All of these theories ran almost purely on conjecture and hypothesis, but that was all it took to buffet the conspiracy to even higher levels. When the first reports of the controversy hit Goring's desk, it was already too far late to stop the rumors. Nothing he could say would end the spiraling theories. If anything, they would only make him worse. Worst of all, Shuna undoubtedly had gotten wind of this as well, and had certainly made a plan to blow it all up in the fear's face. Now, that all Goring could do was wait for Shuna's move and deal with the fallout later. How did it get out? Uh-oh. Germany honors his heroes. One of the biggest issues we've always had with keeping Muscovine in check was that there were all simply too few Germans in the region. The war only made this worse, this issue worse, with the deaths of untold thousands of German settlers. Therefore, we should not be content to only send Muscovine aid. The East needs men, it needs new heroes, akin from the 40s to go forth and conquer the wild plains from barbarians into civil, civilized, endless forests. It'll be a Herculean effort, but one well worth it, yes. We get some more army, oh, we lose army XP, but we don't have any, so that's like, kind of actually okay with us for right now, then. And then, back into the right. We have done it. We have stabilized the area and set up a government apparatus for Moscovim. The natives have returned to their hovels, and the bands have dispersed, and partisans driven back into the woods. A fragile peace has settled over the region. Although we saw some issues further to the east with our poorest borders, Muscovine is stable. More stable than it has been in years, all things considered. The people work, the locals are in line, and the settlers are safe. We're finally able to officially welcome Muscovine into the fold as a German Reich's commissariat once again. It is a glorious day for the Reich and a sign to the world. Germany's back and as strong as ever. I'm sorry that I'm reading so fast, it's just like, it's a lot, but keep spending, because I want to get more output. More, 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 more. That's never enough. We never have enough. Gunter, Emma. Let's go with Emma. I like the name Emma. And we can do that there. Uh, just start doing this stuff, too. You never know what might be around here, you know. Some degenerates. Oh, Russian Volga. The situation is worse than we imagine. Not only has Muscovy fallen apart from the, seeming, in, from the seams into two states, but civil war broke out between the two, and German state is no more. The situation is completely unacceptable. We can we can w not, will not tolerate a Russian Muscovy on our borders. Our vaters, our brothers, and our fellow Germans have blood spilled too much blood for some upstart Russians to rise up and take what is ours. Completely unacceptable. We must mobilize a half on invasion east. Absolutely. And keep working on this because I don't want to forget about this stuff because this is important to do as well. Um, not bad. We do have 20 army XP, which is nice. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, that's a special commando group. At this point, I don't mind making these divisions, but I don't want to make them anymore. Just because I want to make these guys bigger and better. Because if we're going to use them and they don't reinforce, I just want to be able to reinforce them as much as possible. Or start off as strong as possible, I should really say. Uh, do that. Ooh. You know what? Reset, 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 reset. Get the attack choppers on here first. It doesn't slow them down at all. And we'll get so much attack, and it'll be ridiculous. And a ton of breakthrough that'll help it lower our costs in terms of speed. Or, you know, casualties. Um, we could do signal companies, which would be really good as well. Maintenance companies would not be bad either. Ooh, equipment capture ratio. We could do that. Recon will slow us down. Transport helicopters. That's not bad either. Fuel capacity does go up, get more HP. Hurts our organization just a little bit. More trickle back. Oh, even support artillery, though. Plus 39 is not bad. I think I might go with signal companies. I almost never use these, but I want... That's, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Uh, Russian Volga, unacceptable. Muscovine held under Russian boots is completely unacceptable. It is an insult to all Germans' honor. Hitler would be rolling in his grave. Naturally, we were preparing to rectify the situation immediately. The Vaterland is soaring arms and supplies to us to return to the east like our fathers before us. We will kick the door off the rotten frame. Watch the house collapse, then burn it to the ash. We will return. We must return. The fate of the several thousands of Germans stranded in the autonomy depends on us. We will not fail. The drums of war. The, we, the right gave you peace. We gave you stability. We saved you from the cancer that disguised itself as Bolshevism. Or Bolshevikism. We are the ones that purged the Jewish rats from your society. We gave you purpose. In your darkest hour, we came under you. Germany wiped the Jew and the communists away in a wave of blood and iron. When they came again from their frozen cities, we stood together in arms. And again, they threw them back. And when you betrayed us, Germany is coming for you and is coming back for what is rightfully hers. You rose up and killed the sons and daughters of the Reich. And so we shall return with fire and steel to retake what is ours. Beg for forgiveness. It is your only hope. And your only path to salvation. Now, um, anything else here? Saving off the inevitable. How's this looking? That's not bad. That's not bad. Saving off the inevitable. Uh, oh, we can loot these guys too, but mm, civilian investment will, will increase. That's interesting. Let me know if I should do any of this stuff, guys. Should I do any of this stuff? Loot Muscovine? Please let me know in the comments below. Should we do any of this stuff? I really would like to know your opinion on that. So we need. Oh, it's. We're taking a while to do all this stuff, which is not good. But, reclaim what, what's ours. The time has come, the men are ready, the, our armor is in position, and the Lupov is already in the skies, awaiting our orders. We are ready. We will hit the Russians and scatter them like the rats they are. We will push them all on all fronts, from above and on the ground, and save our German brothers that are still trapped in Muscovine. Got the Mittoons? We attack. 
followed up with integrated administration. Muscovine is stable. The factories rumble with life. The streets are peaceful and the fields are full of crops. It's time to cement the regime's power and fully establish Rex Commissariat. Muscovine! Muscovine will again be our gate east and our shield against the various Russian warlords and upstart states. They will be fully integrated into the back, and our hold over the east will be complete once again. And happy August, everyone. We're gonna go away and blitzing. Blitzing super hard. Come on, baby, come on. Only a few more days left. We got so much XP here, but nothing to really use it on except for army XP. God dang it. Integrate the administration. What? I apologize, everyone, but I'm going to end the episode here. I'm, we're going to take these guys out really fast. But, if you enjoyed the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will just murder everyone in the Moscow autonomy that opposes us, because we've already killed off 38,000 people while taking no casualties. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great, great rest of your day.